Hello everyone, you are listening to You've Got 5 Options show on Ungdoms Radio. Tune in at 98.7 every Monday and Wednesday at 11.30 and every odd Friday at 2 o'clock. Join us while we are solving yet another life challenge and if you decide to share your problem with us, yours can be next. Hello everyone, this is Marta and this is Anna and this is You've Got Five Options show that came with the entire intro, which is amazing. So now I really wonder, are we live on air? <laughs> If someone can confirm, please call us. <laughs> yes, call us. Okay, we don't have a number here. We don't remember what is the number. What's the number? Okay, don't call us because not only we don't have the number, but also we don't have the phone <laughs> uh, ready. It's th there is a good reason for that, guys. We are in the new studio and the new studio is amazing. And we are really hoping that you are experiencing a really nice quality of sound right now, etc. And the phone number will come next time. So next time, everything will be under control. Everything, everything. Now, 80% is under control. And Julian, can you confirm that we are live on air? Yes, she can confirm. That's our lovely technician. So, okay, Jan. We are live on air. We have a guest today, Jan Rezek. Is it correct? It's I absolutely correct. Perfect. So, Jan, how do you feel being live on air? Because you have recorded one show with us already, but it was pre-recorded one. Now you are actually live. Well, frankly said, since I don't see all those listeners in front of me, it feels very same. Okay, so... That's uh, so far so good, I guess. Yeah, I would yeah. say so. So, guys, today we have a very special show. I know that I say that everything is special, everyone is special and so on. But today it's really special because we are doing something a little bit different. The ones of you who are listening to You've Got Five Options live show, you know that usually we have a guest. And the guest is talking about a certain topic, be it last time, what did we have, Marta? Help me out. The last live show that mm -hmm. we've had? Oh my God, you are killing me because we have been recording the entire day and now... I know, I know. Go. Universe falls in love with the courageous heart. Yeah. We also had, what else we, did we had, for instance? The magic and tragic of alcohol. Marta really likes to give that example and I don't know why. <laughs> Is there because any tragic about alcohol? It's because it's catchy. And it's like even like rhymes, you know, yeah. magic and tragic. And then alcohol is just so easy. <laughs> <laughs> In general, on so many levels. But guys, if you are our <coughs> listeners, then you know that we usually have this umbrella team. And then we have a guest. And the guest actually reflects on the umbrella team with his own personal or her own personal experience or a career path or whatsoever. So usually we spend 20 minutes on introduction and then we talk about five different facts about the topic and at the end we are asking five questions to our guest. So this will not happen today. That's all I am saying because today we are trying... <laughs> Very funny, Jan. Today we are trying something different. Not only we will change the structure... We have more than one guest. Jan is here with us physically in Aarhus, Denmark, in a radio station. But we will also have five special guests who have sent us recordings with their voices. And we will play them today live. And hopefully this will work. But because we have a wonderful technician, Julian, she will make sure that you will hear all of this. So maybe I will tell you from where this idea came from. I don't know if you remember, but I think six weeks ago, Marta, you had in a studio Claudia, right? Yes. What were you talking about? Because I was actually recovering from a little, totally insignificant surgery, but I couldn't make it. So what was happening at the studio then? So Claudia joined uh, this time only me at the studio to talk about the fact that once you're entrepreneur, you're kind of in danger of waving goodbye to your social life. So we were discussing whether that's true or not, whether that's something that entrepreneurs have to face or not. So that was a very interesting discussion. 
Yeah, and actually we came up with five facts and by facts I mean, you know, things I found on internet. So that kind of facts about entrepreneur's life. And I remember we were talking, Marta was talking with Claudia. Actually, I called the studio for 15 minutes and you were reflecting on those facts. And afterwards, I have posted some of those facts on LinkedIn because I was interested if people actually really can confirm them or debunk them, right? And we got a lot of comments and I was not expecting that. And I remember at the third question, one of the people that you will hear today, Maria Voss, she wrote, God, I hope this will make it to your podcast. Otherwise, you know, I'm just typing and typing. And I was thinking, oh shit, the program was already there. You know, it's like it cannot make it unless we will make an additional show where we will actually reflect on all the things that we got from LinkedIn and we will invite an expert or an, on entrepreneurship, which we have here. And this is how the idea of this show has started. So I wrote to a couple of people who are the most active on LinkedIn in commenting and I asked them if they can send me their voice clips with the answers about those facts. And I got responses from five people. So we have a material today. I will play you a little introduction for all of those mighty guests. But first, I would like to ask Jan, who are you and why are you an expert on entrepreneurship? Okay, so first of all, you saying that I'm an expert gives me a little bit of nerves, but it's fine. I can live with that. Yeah, um, I can live with that. <laughs> so you will I'll, survive. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I'm an international living in Denmark for the last four years. Uh, I came here for studies, but that quickly actually turned into combining studies and, and, and running my own businesses. Uh, and here I am after four years, graduated from, from the university, my master's, and, and still still hustling or at least trying to, to, to run my own businesses because that's what actually drives my passion. Some people have uh, named Jan as serial entrepreneur. Serial entrepreneur, yeah. So we thought that definitely gives him some, you know, of the right cup to wear it here today when we are discussing because you have tried it several times with several different businesses. So you have a perspective on uh, those questions. And I was then thinking, is he serial or serious entrepreneur? But yeah, I would love to believe it's both. <laughs> well, I, I think it's like we, we could definitely call you a serial because, you know, like, you know, like with a serial killer, like a killer who kills more than I think the definition is twice. You made more than, of course, you are not killing anyone, right? How Just let, let's. How do you know? I don't. <laughs> and <laughs> I have a feeling I will find out after the show. <laughs> but how many businesses were you involved in within your life? Uh, speaking of share. Shared and your your own. Um, okay, so I will put it into two two parts, right? Mm -hmm. So So I've been involved with four businesses where I had my share. And then I've been involved with tens of businesses where I actually uh, was playing a role of a consultant or advisor, if you want to call it like that. So not only have I, do I have like my own experience, I also have the transformed or transferred experience from other businesses and that kind of, I'm not sure if it makes me an expert per se. Uh, that's, a, that's a quite strong term, but I think it gives me a very broad perspective of what it actually is to, to run a business and uh, what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Okay, I, I allow it. I think you're qualified, definitely, because what we will be talking today about is what Marta and Claudia were talking before. So basically, the title at that point was Kiss Your Social Life Goodbye, Your Entrepreneur Now. And the facts that we were reflecting upon were facts connected with uh, your social life in some sense, right? Or your relations with others. So the, the, that was not very businessy. But as you are living a life of entrepreneur for so many years, I guess it makes you an expert in telling us how you can uh, treat them as myths or actual facts. What do you think about that? I would love to believe that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Me too. And I also believe <coughs> that Jan is killing it with kindness. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. So I'm a, I am a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> so kindness is the next one on my list. I am so sure that I will pay for that after the show. If you will not hear I think from you'll, me again. you'll pay for that during the show. <laughs> yes, I, I also have a feeling about this one. Oh my God. Okay, so now we know everything about Jan. At least we know 
why he is here. And now I would like to play you a short MP3 clip where I have combined all the introductions from our today's guests who are not actually here. They are magically here because they send their voice clips. Before I will play it, I would like to say that this is not a radio quality, of course. People were using recorders. Um, so let's hope that you will be able to just hear the message because this is the most important. So let's start, Julian. My name is Muna Shakur and I am based in Dubai. I've been living here for the past eight years and I'm a personal development coach. I work with my clients on changing their mindsets, on changing perspectives in order to enjoy a more empowered state of being. I run public workshops and I work with corporate clients as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching. Hello, my name is Katrina. I am living in Denmark at the moment and I'm working as a marketer at Time Extender. But besides that, I'm also a very passionate social media marketer and so much more uh, and also working on different side hustle projects, which in some way makes me an entrepreneur. Emily Wren, CEO of Refined Search Solutions, located in Daytona Beach, Florida. Hi, my name is Maria Fuss. I'm from Denmark. I am the co-founder of a small company called Group of Awesome Marketing, or in short, Goa Marketing. Um, I co-founded it with my partner, Therese Pago, and we work to create a better world free from boring marketing. We do that by working with content marketing and branding on social media for small and medium-sized companies here in Denmark. Hi, my name is Renee Vidor. I live in the United States and I'm an enrichment coach. Julian, are we back on air? Yes, perfect. So that was a short introduction of our guests. I actually asked them all to introduce themselves. Some did it uh, in more elaborated way and some did it in a more short way. But if you don't remember, we have Muna from uh, United Emirates. Dubai. 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 Actually, Dubai, yes. Uh, <coughs> we have uh, Maria from Denmark, actually, here. I think from Colding. We have Katrina, who is Lithuanian, but she is also Denmark Aarhus. And we have two ladies from US, uh, Emily and Rene. So I am super excited that we got voices from basically all over the world. So it's awesome. So let's start with the very first myth that actually had the most comments from everyone. For some reason, it was a really hot topic because it was. And first, it will go like this. I will read the myth. And then I would like first to hear what Jan has to say about this. Then we will play the answers from our special guests and we will have a chance to reflect back on them. Okay, so the myth is entrepreneurs work averagely 80 hours per week true or false both definitely uh, i remember times when i actually started as a, as a as an entrepreneur and i was working something around 80 hours um i basically lost my friends i put my you know relationship back in the days into jeopardy and then basically it backfired because you can keep this pace for a certain time in my case it was like seven or eight months but then I fell into a trap where I was so, I was so, let's, let's put it this way, like stoned with so much information and so much pressure on me that I basically fell into the mo mode where I didn't do anything. So there were so many tasks at the moment, at the time that I was like, okay, this is too much. I'm just sitting down right now and I'm shutting off my laptop, my phone, goodbye. And this lasted for like what month and a half almost. So then it actually, you know, I realized it, it sometimes at the very beginning of the business, you really need to put the hours in. And especially if you're passionate, you don't really count hours. It just happens. But then you need to really be conscious about uh, the long term outcome of this. Because we're not robots. We're not, you know, made to, to work so many hours a week. There needs to be some balance. So I would say it's, it's both true and the myth because... It might be true from the beginning, but you can't keep this pace for a long time. 
I think that there was a number of uh, responses who said exactly the same. It was something like, you know, in a startup phase or in a launching phase, when you are launching either a new product or service within your business, then it can be easily true. But then if you manage yourself correctly, you know, and your time and your calendar or whatsoever, this should not be like a normal practice that you always work that yeah. much right but i think there is a good metaphor if, if you're falling in love with someone you're constantly thinking about the person and you don't really stop you wake up first thing you you do is to think about the person you fall in sleep you do the same it's the same with business if you're really passionate about your idea and, and and what you do even though you might not be working physically let's say with your laptop or whatever you're still thinking of that and those are this is two-sided thing working actually physically and then working in your head and i think that working in your head is more dangerous than actually working physically because if you don't shut it up shut it down at some point it's going to backfire because you will not be focused on anything else okay that's very interesting metaphor also a little bit sad because i was hoping that men that are in love with women they think about them all the time but that's like what this. i said actually. no actually because if I will take your uh, now your allegory here, when you are in love at the beginning, you think about someone, let's say, obsessively for the first six months or something, and then it kind of, you know, uh, integrates in your life. You still love the person, but you are not so obsessive about it. And maybe it's the same with businesses. What do you think about that? I think that's a valid point you, you, you pointed at. I think the difference is that at the beginning of a relationship, speaking of romantic relationship, mm -hmm. uh, you do that naturally and you do that even if you don't have to. Compared to businesses, you really have to put those hours in. But at the same time, you do it effortlessly. Yeah, that's true. So guys, are you curious to hear what our guests, special guests, have to say? Absolutely. This one will come from Muna, Maria and René. So I will play the whole file, which is, I think, around two minutes and a half. And after the, that, I would like you guys to reflect on something that really struck you, if any. I think there will be something interesting here, okay? So let's start. You know, I don't calculate the number of hours I work uh, now as an entrepreneur. When I worked um, in the corporate world, I did calculate the hours because I knew what time I was going to work, what time I was leaving. And if I was working from home, I knew how many hours I was working exactly. And um, in the past, I used to consciously make an effort to stop working on the weekends, to really take those uh, weekends to take a real break. Now, because it's my own practice and my own business, I'm constantly thinking about it. So even if I'm not actually sitting behind my desk and working or talking to clients or uh, giving trainings or anything like that, I'm constantly thinking about it, whether it's reading or talking to people or watching documentaries, it's, it's ongoing all of the time. So is it 80 hours, 100 hours, 50 hours? I really don't know. Does entrepreneurs work an average eight hours a week? I don't know. I think some people do. I don't think everybody do. As an entrepreneur, we tend to think about our work and our business a lot. And therefore, I believe most of us think that we work a lot, when in reality, if you actually sit down and take time on it, you realize that you actually don't work as much as you think you do. So I think most entrepreneurs would answer yes, to that question or would think they work 60 hours a week or so. But in reality, when you time it, it's not that much. Does an entrepreneur work at least 80 hours or more per week? Really, that depends on whether or not they are a master in the art of living. So there's this guy named Lawrence P. Jacks that may help you discover whether or not you're an entrepreneur working 80 or more hours a week. He says, the master in the art of living makes little distinction between his work and his play, his labor and his leisure, his mind and his body, his education and his recreation, his love and his religion. He hardly knows which is which. He simply pursues his vision of excellence at whatever he's doing, leaving others to decide whether he is working or playing. To him, he is always doing both. 
And honestly, I don't believe that I am working 80 plus hours a week, even though others probably see that. And the answer is I'm a master in the art of living. Okay, guys, so you have heard three really, really interesting opinions. And what do you think? What stood up? Do, do you have something that was really like, hmm, interesting? There is something that the second lady said. I can't really remember. Maria. Maria. Maria what Maria from, said. That was really night. relevant because um, I've met entrepreneurs or so-called entrepreneurs who claim to work, you know, 80, 70, 80, even more hours a, a week. And the truth is that it's basically falling into this, you know, entrepreneurial aura, what I call it. Because I have met many people who who just, you know, have this feeling of being an entrepreneur. Then they set up their, they open their business, but nothing's happening. But they claim they're entrepreneurs, they're, you know, businessmen because they have a business opened. Um, and they then somewhat brag about, you know, the time that they spend on the business because it sounds cool, because it gives you some maybe social status. Uh, but the reality is different. So when I talk to entrepreneurs and they tell me how much they actually work on their business, I take it with a little bit of a reserve because the reality might be slightly different. Mm, interesting. How about you, Marta? So I think that those, uh, all the three points were really, really interesting. And I r am really reflecting on this fact of working versus being productive. That's something that is really standing out here for me, because how much are you keeping yourself busy versus how much are you actually productive in your work? So that's definitely a great point to look into. And the other thing that stands out for me is the thinking part, how powerful our thoughts are that because of not being able to pose our thoughts for a while, we actually feel like we are working or you know, like the way we think about it, like the third, the last lady, what was the name of the last? Renee. Lady? Renee. She brought that this is, you know, you can live your life also in a way that it's actually, it doesn't matter if it's a work or pleasure. And I, I love this as well. But, you know, keeping that balance in between integration of life, but also not going into when you're all the time into the, you know, working mode, even though you actually would need a resting mode. Yeah, so. I think it's a matter of perspective because if you really do what you love, you don't really see it as working. You still think of it 24 seven, but you don't really perceive that as working. So I think it's it's a little bit tricky question to ask like how many hours a week you, 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 you know, you work because people have different perspectives and different, uh, you know, objective uh, views at, at, at the work per se. Yeah, and I think that's why that was one of those most polarizing questions where we got so many different answers because it depends also on the mindset. Uh, but now I would like to go to the question number two. And I know that that was not a smooth transition, guys, but I want to really discuss all the five points. And the question number two was a question where our special guests, all of them actually sent a voicemail. But first, of course, we will ask Jan what he thinks about it. So... Your social life is over once you are an entrepreneur. Again, there are two ways to look at this. Like I said, in my case, I basically lost all my friends or they lost me, whatever you want to look at it. Um, it's because I wasn't actually socializing with them as much as I used to. But on the other hand, you have to look at the way of being an entrepreneur as a, as a master of networking. And that requires you to be very social because especially in Denmark, all the businesses are very much depending on their networks. So socializing on Friday evening in a bar, getting drunk and, you know, smoking cigarettes, maybe not. Socializing on networking events, creating new connections and exploiting them. Yeah, definitely. I think that this is actually a very good point. It also depends on the way you socialize and some of your former connections, friends or your group that you were hanging out with may not be into that new way. But let's see what, what the ladies responded because we have five different voice clips and for sure we will have different answers. So guys, are you ready? Sure. Sure? Bring it Perfect. On. Regarding the myth about entrepreneurs not having a social life, I think becoming an entrepreneur, I actually have more of a social life 
due to the nature of my business, I actually have to meet people in order for them to get to know me, in order for them to trust me, to put their hiring needs in my hands. So I'm able to actually get out in the community, meet with business owners, meet with other people who are either in the job market or in the hiring market. And, you know, it's forced me to get out there and actually be more social in the community and get to know more people versus when I was in HR, just kind of sitting at my desk and and getting to know my employees. It's a totally different environment and I'm definitely more social. Is my social life over now that I'm an entrepreneur? Well, not really. I've, instead of, you know, ending my social life, I've decided to look at how much value I gain from the people I surround myself with. Um, And I realized that a lot of the friends I had before weren't really giving me anything. So I changed. Um, I had a smaller group of friends now, but they are my true friends. We give each other, you know, value. And some of them are more work related than they were before. My social life hasn't been affected in terms of quantity. I still am as active as I was in the past. What has changed is the quality of my social life. So I didn't go out and change my friends. It's just that the types of discussions that we are now engaging in um, are different. And um, we still manage to get together and to talk and to go out and to have fun. So for me, I'm still enjoying a very active and happy social life. And so I have an opinion about the social life because I do think that your social life is not going to die, even though you are an entrepreneur. It will be more difficult, of course. You will have less time for your friends. But if you make time for your friends and if you make time for your social life, you can still have it. It's not going to disappear. So in my opinion, it's all about planning. It's all about keeping up with your schedule and really taking care of your planning. Does an entrepreneur need to kiss their social life goodbye? No, absolutely not. It might change a little bit, but the truth is we run with the kind of people that we are most like. We run with the people who have similar passions and we're just going to find new people to run with. We're going to find other entrepreneurs, other people who value the same things that we are trying to accomplish. And our social life may change, may look very different. It may even look to others as if we're working, but in reality, we're being very social because we love to be around other people who are making a difference and being entrepreneurs as well. Okay, guys, so that was quite a lot of opinions. Just to give you a heads up, first we heard from Emily, then from Maria, then Muna, Kotrina, and at the end we had Rene. So, guys, what do you think about this? Well, feedback, if, quite big feedback. If I set the line through all the, all the you know, recordings, I could hear one thing. The social life has not been kissed goodbye. It's just that the nature of... The social life has changed. That's exactly what I was talking about before. It's, I wasn't hanging out with my friends in order to have, you know, fun like I used to, what I considered back in the days to be fun. Um, I was more socializing to actually support my business, but the social life expanded with like its quality. So definitely, yeah, I agree with, with all, of, all of the women. Mm, back to you, Mark. By the way, I would like to just point out the historical moment a man has agreed with all the women. That actually might be true. <laughs> historical moment <laughs> with all, right here. not even with one, with all five of them. We've made a history. We made a history here. So, ladies, our special guests, good job, really good job. Marta, back to you. What What was your thought? So, my my thought is exactly the same, and actually, everyone. All the ladies uh, have talked about the transformation in their social life. So maybe you have to kiss goodbye some of your friends. So in a way, it is some sort of a goodbye to particular friends that you can no longer resonate with. And maybe they don't feel like they would like to grow with you or you don't feel like you can grow with them. So it could be a goodbye to a special to some 
part of your friends, but definitely it seems it's, it actually has a positive impact on your social life in general. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. But on, on the other hand, not to scare anyone off. Um, you don't have to, you know, lose anyone. But still, time is a matter of priorities. When someone tells me I don't have time, to me, that means I don't have time for you. That's it. So if you want to meet with someone, you'll meet with someone, no matter what, you'll find a time. That's it. Yeah, I actually, I totally agree. And I have to say that when I was thinking about it, it's that sometimes within life, it doesn't matter. I think being an entrepreneur or switching into an entrepreneurship is a huge change for you, for your lifestyle and so on. But we as humans, we go through so many changes within our lives and some connections that we have with friends are simply, you know, getting close or even dying. I think it's in some way natural that when we change the way we are, the way we live our life, or when we change the the whole way how we make money or, you know, how we express ourselves professionally, it should be natural that we will lose something on the way or maybe something will simply change or transform. So, um, but as you said, you are right. It's not like we don't have time. We don't have time for specific things. We all have 24 hours, right? Yeah. When you're cutting a tree, there are small sticks running, coming out. Okay, this is probably some kind of a Czech proverb. It is. So I hope please. it's understandable. In, in, <laughs> no. Okay, so when you're, cutting, when you're cutting a tree, there are those small pieces of wood just, you know, falling apart. Yeah. Uh, so in... in Human language, in English language, that means that if you're changing something, there are parts that just, you know, will not be lo- will no longer be a part of your life. Okay, that's an interesting one. Can we hear it in original? Beautiful. Okay, so now we are going to the myth number three, which is very similar, but still has an interesting angle. Entrepreneur has no time for dating relationship. Jan, back to you. There has never been a time in my life when I wouldn't be in a relationship while having a business. That somehow that doesn't surprise me. Why? <laughs> that was supposed to be a compliment. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. No, but I think this is a myth, like a big one. I would even call it the BS. Uh, okay. That's just not... No, I would even say that entrepreneurs, they really need to be with someone like in, in a relationship, in a romantic one, because for many entrepreneurs, this is the only way to switch off for, for at least a moment. So if you think that you will have no time for dating or romantic relationships while you're an entrepreneur and running your own business, yeah, don't trust that. It's not true. Unless it comes down to priority, guys, because some people, they do live like that. They do not make the room for the relationship while they are in the startup phase of their business. So I guess it goes down to priority. I think it's it's a short term seeing. It could be, but actually that's why I will play the clip in a moment so we can have a better or more like a deeper discussion hearing what our special guest had to say about this. But while we will be listening to it, I would also like to reflect you to reflect on this that it's not only about dating it's about the relationship you had maybe you had a relationship or marriage for years and how switching to entrepreneurship would change that okay so now we will play answers from maria and from muna this is only maria and muna okay we have only two so yeah let's play it (laughs) yeah dating and relationships Oh damn, um, I've always been single and I was single when I started the company So and I'm still single so it hasn't helped I guess um, well it's hard, it's really hard I have a non-existing dating relationship, love life thing I can't seem to find um, the energy and the, the necessary energy to build a relationship because you need that input of energy you need to to give uh, the other person a lot so you can build that relationship and then you can really go into to your work and a normal life so i think my work does have something to do with it but i know that people who were in a relationship when they started uh, their company they can work it out 
In terms of relationships, I feel like my relationship with my husband has has become much stronger in the past year since I started my own business and my own practice, mostly because he's the one person that I talk to the most now that I don't have colleagues like I did in the past. So I'm constantly bouncing ideas off of him and um, it's it's brought us closer together. Okay, guys, so we got two quite different voice clips, but I think it's also because of the ladies being in a different situations. One of them started a company while she already had a husband and the other one, well, you should see Anne's face <laughs> because that was actually quite the opposite to what he said. But I'm, I'm really curious. Okay, Jan, hit it. So start first. No, I mean, I can't really argue with anyone talking about this topic because clearly this topic can be generalized, right? It's very, of course, of it's course. very individual thing. So I would just say, okay, go with what works for you the best and uh, I'll have my fingers crossed for you. Uh, but anyway, like still something tells me that running a business and being single, it's a, it's a lot of pressure anyway. And if you have no one to share it with, like someone, your significant other, maybe makes it even more, even harder to, to run the business. That's a good point. Marta, how about your opinion? So I think that this, I mean, we are in different phases in life and we are very different people. So some people, they will be in a situation where they would like to be in a relationship and they just don't seem to be able to find the right partner because maybe they have to work through some stuff for themselves first. There will be people that will strengthen their relationship while they are building their business. There will be others that will suddenly completely lose the energy and priority and focus on their relationship and their relationship will go down. So I would say I agree with you, Jan. This is so, so personalized. And we people, you know, in any given time uh, are in in any given situation. So it could be even the same person in one year, completely not into relationship and like I'm single, I'm happy and I'm rocking my business. And in the next year, it's like, oh, you can definitely connect the business and the relationship. It's beautiful because they just simply meet the right partner. So, yeah, life. Just to confirm what you just said, I used to be that guy who whose dream was to have like three dogs and five companies and never get married and never have kids. And here I am um, being very, very closely connected to my significant other, uh, making it work just smooth. Yeah, just just to reflect on what Maria, both Maria and Muna said. By the way, I think I had to cut this clip because it was a very long introduction. Maria is 24 and she has started her company, I think, three or four years ago. So that's her life, you know, and she's still very young. Now I feel like grandma, by the mm. way, but OK, doesn't matter. Um, what I would like to say that I was in every single scenario here. And I could imagine that I was having now when I think about what I'm doing and the, the businesses I'm trying to start with my former partners, with most of them, that would kill the relationship. They would not be able to handle me working that much, doing so many things. Uh, there would be attention problem and, and so on. There was a period last year when I thought and no relationships. It will simply not work. I work too much. I work constantly. I create things constantly. I am a single mom. I cannot even yeah, like squeeze a guy, you know? Now I'm in a relationship. And I'm in a relationship with a person who stands 100% for everything I do, supports me, takes care of me, gives me feedback about my ideas. You can be in any of those situations depending on the relationship you are depending on your own mindset because I think one thing was actually Marta I remember last year we had that conversation and I was like Marta look at my life where the hell will I squeeze a guy how will I even go out and meet someone it's like it's impossible she was like Anna you're thinking about this the wrong way because you are comparing maybe to some I don't know relationships you had there are guys who can easily accept, you know, a woman who is, I don't know, working, have her passion and so on. And she also got them right, you know. So sometimes you just have to take your own head out of your ass and simply believe that things can be different. But it's many times only in our minds. Yeah, it's very much connected to your to your life phase, yeah, I would say. totally. But I also could see definitely... If you change and you want to start a business and you are in a relationship with a person that is not supportive of that, 
that can destroy the relationship. I mean, it can be, it can put your relationship in, into jeopardy, even if your uh, significant other actually supports you. And that may be because he or she doesn't necessarily realize what it, exactly it takes for the boyfriend or girlfriend of his or her to actually have a business. Because then all of a sudden, that person will at its beginning start to work like those 60 or 80 hours. And, you know, the relationship might not be just ready for that. So even though, you know, you get a support from the other side, it might not be enough like itself per se. Okay. Uh, I think that there is a lot of wisdom here. I think that, as we said, this is not a question or a myth that can be debunked completely or confirmed because it depends on a person. And I hope that we have proved that by listening to the voice clips and having this discussion. Guys, we have two more myths left and we have 15 minutes. We will make it, but let's try to make it concise. So now we have number four. People change the way they talk to you. Once you have your own business. Jan, yes, that's that's you. That's your moment to shine and not look at the mobile. <laughs> Sorry, I was just checking the checking the time. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I would say I would say this this also confirms what I said before, and that is many people do start a business just because they want to s- change their status, social status. Because in some way people do look at you differently. And people do take you more serious and they think that you are, you know, you're this new Zuckerberg and you're, you know, uh, Jeff Bezos and, 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 you know, those people. So they kind of look upon you. And some people open their business just to have that. And they talk about working eight, eight hours a week and it's not completely true. And so, yeah, I would actually confirm, I would actually confirm this, this, this hypothesis. Okay, so now let's listen uh, to the voicemails from Muna, Emily and Maria. And then let's reflect on what we heard. I don't think that people talk to me differently now that I'm an entrepreneur. What has changed is the type of conversations that I am having because of the new role that I'm playing um, as, as a person who's working on her own. So it's not so much people thinking that they need to talk to me differently. It's the type of discussions that are naturally and automatically going in different directions. It's almost the same as when I became a mother. You know, these conversations started happening and coming up with other mothers. That's the only thing that's changed. When people find out that I am an entrepreneur, I think it is definitely, they have changed the way they have spoken to me. When I was in HR, you know, people would ask me, oh, HR, you know, make the joke about how everybody hates HR. But, you know, now that I'm an entrepreneur, it is different. People have this sense of respect and kind of, I think people think entrepreneurship is a scary endeavor when in reality, I think all of us who have gone out on our own and and started our own business are actually just, you know, a little bit crazier than the average person. And that's why we've made that decision. But I, I think there is a sense of respect that people give to me when they find out that I am not only only, you know, started my own business, but I am a young entrepreneur. I think that adds a different a different layer to it as well. But it's been fun. <laughs> yeah, um, people do change the way they talk to you once you start your own business. It's they um, they begin to be interested in a lot of different things. Sometimes they uh, they tend to go into a more business uh, minded conversation, which I don't mind. But sometimes when you know that it's a uh, when it's a person who who still who still studies and who really don't have any relation or any business kind of influx, um, it's not really relevant for me to talk a lot about my work and uh, how it is to be an entrepreneur because for real it's you know it's my work. There's some there's other things that I am actually interested in, but still people do think it's very interesting to meet someone who have their own business and. That's fair. But, you know, I have other interests. Okay, guys. So we've heard those three opinions. And I have to say that the last one was interesting because I think what Maria meant is that people actually want to talk with her about entrepreneurship all the time so they can get information from her, you know. And uh, I could understand that this might feel sometimes like, okay, I have different interests, like 
why do you ask me all the time about my business or how you do this, how you do that and so on. So that was actually something interesting that I haven't thought about before. How about you guys, Jan? Well, I would like to reflect both on the second and the third answer, the th starting with the third one. I might have misunderstood, but not considering young people and students relevant to talk about entrepreneurship, I think those are the people we should especially talk about entrepreneurship too, because those are the people that actually still have the possibility. They're, they have the easiest time of their life to make a change and to you know, go and make a mistake. Um, so why not just, you know, give back a little bit and inspire? That's, uh, that's the third answer. And the second answer, um, there was a mention that she felt like people respect her a little bit more. And it's, yeah, it, that was Emily. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, that's funny because I can totally confirm that, uh, not that there is a reason for that in my particular case, but people do consider me to be more, to have more of a wisdom right in this sense and also what's even funnier they consider me to be very rich just because i have started my business since like you know month one they considered me to be oh he's a businessman so he's he can afford this and he can afford that and people start to actually talk to you differently because they perceive you as a someone from you know above the class really yes okay. and like if you saw me today i just biked here throughout the rain <laughs> uh, got completely soaked and <laughs> so it's not it's not about that. So and not, you actually have no phone. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's even even my phone is is gone. And <laughs> so starting up a business and being an entrepreneur doesn't necessarily mean that you are rich from the beginning. Like it may come and it will come, but not to begin with. Marta, how about you? So what I have experienced so far is that people. Have, when I mentioned this, that I actually have a business on the side of working and what they say is like, wow, people have like a lot of like, wow, you're so courageous. Exactly. And uh, so, so there is something about courage. People, uh, people find people who have their own business as brave. And then there is also, in my case, because I also work full time and I have children, people are like, how do you do it? It's mm -hmm. like, how is that even possible that with all you have already that you are still also an entrepreneur? So there is also something in this. But I found this people find people brave and courageous because you go for it, because you go for your idea, you go for your passion. And uh, yeah, that was what I Found. That's very true, especially. Sorry, uh, that's very true, especially for those people who are dreaming about starting up a, a business, and then they're like, "Wow!" So I'm dreaming about it in, in the night, and that person has already done that. So it's like, "Wow!" That deserves a lot of respect, and you know. Uh, I can totally confirm. I remember, you know, getting congratulations because we started a podcast at that point when we started this as a podcast. And uh, wow, this is so great. And you are this, doing this after hours. It was quite shocking until now when people are like, wow, congratulations. And for us, it's so normal already. You know, this is this is how it rolls. So, uh, yeah, there is something about it. And it was interesting to hear it from Emily from States when she said people give her respect. So this is something that is beyond cultures and beyond countries. The last myth I wanted to discuss is no entrepreneur is a lonely island, which means that even if this might be one of the loneliest jobs in the world, especially if you are a solo person, you cannot survive alone for a longer run. So first I will play the clip and then we will reflect on that, okay? No entrepreneur is a lonely island. True or false? Hmm. True, I'd say. I would never ever have been able to work and do this without my partner, Therese. It would have been impossible for me. Um, I also have a mentor who helped me through a lot of stuff. And of course, I utilize my, my friends and my family a lot. It's not a good thing to stand alone when you're doing this because the insecurities of your work is are, are enormous um you work from sometimes you know from day to day basis if you don't work you don't have any no food on the table so friends and family um and business partners and mentors mean a lot 
When it comes to entrepreneurship and really maybe let's call it solopreneurship, you are on your own most of the times and you do feel lonely and you do feel like there's no one that really understands your struggle and um, sometimes you really need someone by your side. But if you can survive through that loneliness, uh, which is going to happen anyhow, um, it makes you a really strong person. So I'm saying that entrepreneurship, yes, if you're alone and starting a company on your own, then it is, of course, lonely. If you have a team, that's a different story. Well, yes, I do feel that it's a little bit lonely being an entrepreneur compared to being in an office with 200, 300 people. Sometimes when I come up with an idea, I want to turn around and ask someone their opinion or have a discussion about it. And I don't get that anymore working on my own. Um, when something good happens, I want to, you know, high five someone and people are not always around to to do that. So in that sense, yes, it's a little bit lonely. Um, I do try to stay uh, active in some of the networks that I'm, um, uh, I'm part of. And I have become much more active on social media, connecting with people like you and others. And that makes it a little bit less lonely for me. So guys, that was the last video clip that we have played today. We have five more min four minutes to reflect on that before we will, because we might have to end in any moment. I would just like to thank one more time Maria, Muna, Emily, Rene and Katrina for doing this fantastic effort. And I think we made it. It worked. I'm actually super happy that uh, we we did this in this format and I hope we will um, repeat it again. So thank you very much, uh, ladies, for sending this to us. And now I would like to hear from Jan and Marta the last reflections about No Entrepreneur is a Lonely Island. Again, uh, I couldn't agree with more with, with what, what we've just heard. Me as a solo entrepreneur in my business, I mean, I have partners, but those are, those are in, located in different country. I feel so lonely sometimes. And right now, I have to be I have to be very honest. Right now, me the idea of me being a part of another company where I play a part as an employee is not very far from my heart. Not because of the money, not because of the security, not because of the warm place, because of the culture, because of those people you can high five, because of those people who get you up once you fall on your back and they will just tell you, "Okay, dust off." And get get back if you're a solo entrepreneur no one does that but you and sometimes it takes a lot of energy from the bottom of your heart to actually get yourself up and and go again okay marta what do you think about that especially that you have a lot of experience working in corporation so definitely i'm a people's person and I definitely need to work with people, but also the business I'm going into is very much related to working with people. I couldn't do it on my own. I wouldn't like to do it on my own, but I think it's a great school of life. And I think it's a great opportunity to actually become your very own best friend. If you are actually capable of doing that when it's so tough that you can find this, you know, this, oh, there is still this extra little bit, you know, of love that I can give myself to push myself up. It's amazing gift that you give yourself. Yet, of course, we are people and we are meant to connect with others. So it is important that we don't keep ourselves in this, you know, lonely island uh, position and we actually reach out and we actually build the networks and uh, that we actually have those other people to high five every now and again. So I think it's definitely very important for humans. Guys, thank you so much for these reflections and thank you so much for being here. Uh, Jan, thank you for yes, being here you again for... and not being afraid <laughs> of, of joining us. Marta, thank you for being a wonderful co-host like you always are. Um, yeah, I think it was a really cool program. I'm not sure if we have set up the record straight about those myths, but we definitely gave them more dimensions because they are not so straightforward. So everyone, thank you for listening. Thank you very much for, for inviting me. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend, guys. Bye. Bye. You are listening to You've Got 5 Options show. Remember that we are on air every Monday, Wednesday and every second Friday.
Remember that you can visit our website www.you'vegot5options.com That is www.y-o-u-v-e-g-o-t-5 as a number options.com where you can submit your challenge and find our podcast. You can also find us on iTunes or any podcast app.